In this demonstration, we're going to look at configuring replication within System Center Configuration Manager. In Configuration Manager, data that is transferred between sites is categorized in three different data types. We have global data, site data, and also as well content. Now, depending on the type, some data is copied to all sites, other data is only copied to some sites in your hierarchy. What we're going to have a look at here is actually configuring that replication. So when you configure a parent-child relationship and config manager hierarchy, replication is configured automatically between the parent and the child sites. Later, what we can do is we can create routes manually if we want to customize the connection configuration. And we can view the file-based connections in the file replication node that we have under hierarchy configuration. So if I just come here and go to file replication, we can see that we have file replication between our sites. And if we pull this across, just so we can see a bit more information. And generally, site data generated at the secondary site will use file-based replication to transfer the data to the parent site. So what we'll do here is we'll just come to a datum site. We'll right-click. We'll have a look at the properties. And on the properties here, what we've got on the general page, so we can see the source site code name being S01, a datum site. And the site code and site name for the destination is CAS London Central Site. We're going to use the computer account at the source site for the replication account. On the schedule, as we can currently see, we can control the network load during critical time. So currently what we've got here is at all times of the day, we're open for all priorities. Now what we can do is we can modify for certain times of the day or certain times of the week. So let's just say on Sunday between the hours of 8 and 6, what we want to do is we just want to close that down. Then we have our rate limits tab. So we can actually prevent config manager from consuming all available bandwidth. So currently what we've got here is we've got limited to a specified maximum, but as you can see, it's 100% at this time of the day. We can have unlimited when sending to this destination. We can use pulse mode, so we can send out some data, pause, send out some data, pause. What we're going to do here is just between the hours of 0 and 6, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually limit the available bandwidth for Config Manager to 50%. We'll then select OK. The other type of replication we have is database replication. Generally within Configuration Manager, all of our configuration and all of our statistics get captured to a database. And if we're using a central admin site, we'd like to have visibility to that data from our central admin site. So if I just come to my database replication, we'll just go for parent site CAS, central admin site, the child site is S01, and we'll just right click and we'll just have a look at the child database properties. So we have a database tab, and on the database tab, we can specify the port for the broker point. We can enable data compression, so it can compress the data that replicates between other sites with SQL. And also as well, we have our data retention. And the purpose of this data retention is to specify if we do actually lose a link, how long we retain the data. When replication gets restored to the parent site, it will send its instance of the global data and overwrite the local data. Also as well, any site data is also reinitialized on the links with the, ch the child primary site. So, as it says here, we can go from 1 through to 14 days. What I'm going to do here for my data retention, I'm going to make mine weekly. I'll make that 7 days and we'll select OK. What we also have associated with the database replication is we also have our link properties. So on our link properties here, we've got our SQL Server Distributed Views. So we can enable the site data for use in SQL Server Distributed Views at the Central Admin site. And site data from the primary site that you enable does not replicate to the Central Admin site. If you do want to use Distributed Views, Central Admin site must use a single SMS provider as installed on the site database server. We can then enable the type of data that we want to have with Distributed Views. And down at the bottom here, we've got our replication data summary. So we can specify when we summarize any reporting data for the database replication. So we're currently summarizing every 15 minutes. I'm going to drop that down to five minutes, purely for reporting purposes, and select OK. If we just right click again, just go back to our link properties. So what we've also got, we've got our schedule tab. So as we can see here on our schedule tab here, Configure when database replication sends site data across the replication link. So we're going to do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Also as well, if we look at the alerts, we will generate an alert when this replication link is not working. And we'll save that for, let's say, 30 minutes. We're happy with the defaults. Number of retries before we degrade the link, we'll go for 12. And number of retries before the link status is set to field, we'll say 24. 
So we'll select OK again. Next thing we'll have a look at here is configuring our sender properties. So in order to do that, we come down to our site configuration. We'll go to our sites. We'll go with our S01 site. And then what we'll do is we'll just right click and what we'll do is we'll configure site components. Within our site components, what we're going to do here is we're going to go for software distribution. As we can see here, packages can be distributed concurrently to multiple distribution points. So we need to specify the limits for this concurrent distribution and retry settings. So what we're going to do here is just for the number of packages, let's increase that to five. Then what we'll do is the maximum number of threads per package, let's increase that to eight. In the case of number of retries, what we've got here is we've currently got number of retries 100. Seems to be a bit excessive for me to be perfectly honest. Let's set that to five. Delay before retrying in minutes. Um, again, 30 minutes seems a bit excessive, so let's set that to five. Then what we've got here is in the case of our multicast retry settings. So we've got the number of retries currently set to um, three. I'm happy with that. And delay before retrying one. I'm happy with that. So this point here, we'll select OK. Then what we'll do is we'll just monitor our replication. And in order to do that, we come to our monitoring tab. We'll come to our database replication. And as we can see here, our link is active. I'm not bothered about this NYC one. I don't actually have that server turned on. And in the case of the Toronto one as well, again, I don't really have that one turned on either. So the only one I currently have in play is actually going from my CAS to my primary site. And what we can see down the bottom here is we can see the parent site. We can see the parent site state replication is active. We can see the child site replication is active. We can see the parent site child global state link is active. We can also see as well global synchronization time. Scroll this down a bit further. We can see the child site to parent site global state. We can see when we last synchronized. We can see the percentage. Just in the case of the site data replication status. So again, link is active. We can view the related historical traffic data by clicking on the hyperlink. So it's just telling us here that I don't have the necessary security rights to view this report. But if I did, I'd be able to read the report. I was just trying to point out there that is a hyperlink. And scroll this down a bit further. So everything's good so far. We can have a look at the information relating to the primary site or the parent site. We can see the child site. We can see any initialization detail. And we can also as well see the replication detail. So what we're seeing here is hopefully we're seeing that everything is replicating correctly. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.